Hi all, um, right, so today we're gonna to do a little video about tire pressure, so, and the importance of it. So today I'm out on the Ranger, which is here. And um, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, um, I've charged the bike up to um, 80%. Now it can only, I've only charged the battery to 80% because Cyrusher sent me the wrong power brick. Um, and essentially it only does a maximum charge of 80%. So let me show you that here. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. The sunshine and the camera do sort of seem to pick up a little bit more reflection. But um, anyway, so um, what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do two journeys, essentially. Today's journey, um, I've got the tires pumped up to 20 PSI to their um, maximum. And then tomorrow we'll do the same run and I'm gonna reduce it down to probably 10, maybe 15, and we'll do exactly the same journey. And uh, I'll show you exactly how much battery we've got left after both days of traveling. Okay, hopefully we'll, um, as I said, same route, two days, and then we'll get the results. All right, so we're going through the coastal car park and we're gonna head down onto the Folkestone to Hive promenade. Just to uh, another thing as well. Um, this is September in the UK. Um, <laughs> this isn't normal weather. Normally by now, um, autumn's well and truly uh, hit us. It's cold, it's raining. But apparently we've got one more week left of this, so uh, Let's make the most of it. Uh, the water's like a mill pond today. Don't often see the sea so flat. But yeah, very hazy today. Quite poor mo mo mobility. Uh, quite poor visibility but it's incredibly warm still I'll probably say it's probably close to 28 degrees today which is as I said earlier unheard of in September anyhow let's continue on with our journey It's funny because um, normally from this point you'd be able to see Dungeness Power Station over there uh, which obviously delivers all the electric to uh, a vast majority of uh, Kent, South East Kent. 
but that haze is uh, completely eliminating our view of that. Still, I'm not complaining. So we're just entering into um, Hive. And on the right hand side, um, probably can't see it, but just over the little brow of that hill, there is indeed a golf course which is linked to the Hive Imperial Hotel, which is just ahead of us, the big white building. But yeah, stunning, stunning views along here. Perhaps on a day when it's not so hazy. So we've come from Folkestone, uh, we've gone through Sandgate and we're now into Hive. So let's continue on. But yeah, would you look at this? I expect the, um, everybody in the UK can't believe their luck at the moment. Little boy, a wide berth. The only real shame about along here is it's not a sandy beach. It's just a pebbly beach. And, uh, well, essentially, they're no good for um, fat tire e-bikes. The sand, all the snow, however, is a completely different kettle of fish. And uh, we will explore some sand and uh, the relevant tire pressures, etc. Which is what this video is all about. Right, let's go up by the waterfront, bar and hotel. I mean, bar, should I say? And we'll continue on. Now on back onto the roads. Right, so uh, we're still in Hive and uh, I think we're gonna mosey on down alongside the canal. Coming up in front of us is the um, light railway. Train station, which is just across the other side of the road, which is actually like a mini train. So it's not a full size train. It's actually a lot smaller. And look, you can even hire your e-bikes here. Obviously only 250 watt motors, so um, 
Yeah. Anyhow, oh, let's move this and we'll continue on. We've got a journey. And we're going to go down the backside path, which runs along by the canal. And also at the bottom end of Port Lim Zoo. And if we're extremely lucky, we may even see some animals today without actually having to purchase a ticket. But we'll see. to the trail. It is really nice along here. In fact, this is probably one of my most sort of visited areas along the south coast, is to ride along this way. just enough out of it that you feel like you're more in touch with nature than um, a city or town life. But unfortunately, on the left of us, well not unfortunately, is the canal. Um, and because I'm on a bike, I'm not allowed to ride up there, apparently even though I got stopped by a local council official on a bike, riding along there, who told me I wasn't allowed. Sort of sounds like double standards to me, really. But there we go. That's my little rant out of the way. And on the right hand side, well that's Portland Zoo, through the trees. Um, I don't see any activity on there at the moment, but it's not to say we might not see something a bit further up. If you haven't gone to Portland Zoo though, I do highly recommend it. It's absolutely beautiful grounds some great animals to see even though I don't really agree with them being locked up in cages etc they do seem to have quite big habitats to sort of run around in so I suppose out of this compared to say London City Zoo I'd probably say this is the better of the two really um, as far as the animals go and their treatment But one thing I would say to you though, if you do come to Port Lim Zoo, be very prepared for a long walk. What I probably should have done, and <clears throat> hopefully there will be some uh, video evidence of it. But what I should have done before I set off on this journey was to take a reading of how many miles we're going to do so hopefully um, I've got that on the display if not when we come out on the next journey and do this with different tire pressure we'll um, 
we'll mark it all and uh, you know make a note of it all properly so uh, it all should be good I don't know if you saw that but um, and it's quite often along here really there's so much wildlife you often see squirrels and etc other rodents running across this path and normally for some strange reason they do it right at the last minute when you're almost upon them now we're at the back of Port Lim Zoo um, unfortunately I can't see I don't know if we get a better view along here but yeah this is uh, the back end of Portland Zoo and quite often there's uh, some of the animals are brought down here to graze but not today it seems which is a bit of a shame really because uh, yeah as I said before you sort of you get to see the animals for nothing not that I don't want to pay to go to the zoo but um, a freebie's a freebie nonetheless so you can't really knock them oh. right let's get out this little dip and be on our way Oh, another thing to note as well. Um, I'm only going to use pedal assist one. So I'm not going to go up to pedal assist two, three, four or five, because essentially that's going to give us a different readout. And that'll completely mess, mess up this little experiment. Even though I'm off-road, this is pretty flat along here, really. Um, and it's not the sort of off-road environment I'd probably say that you should bring down your tyre pressure. But, um, so 20 PSI in our tyres today, and that should be well good enough. In fact, it feels really comfortable to ride. But we'll keep going along here and we'll go down to a key point I'll stop we'll have some lunch um, we'll have a quick chat and then we'll do the journey back home along the exact same route oh Well, like I was saying, you can't see any animals, but in actual fact, I'm not sure if you can see that through the trees, but we do seem to have some antelope down there. Have I identified those animals correctly? Maybe not. But yeah. Just nice to see them out grazing. But yeah, all the way up there at the top, that's all Port Lim Zoo. All oh, the stretches all the way along here, essentially. Um, and yeah, they just generally bring the animals down here for grazing. 
but yeah beautiful to see i'm not sure if we can there's one looking straight at us say hello probably looking at me thinking what's that idiot doing i haven't signed a waiver to be on film <laughs> Sorry, buddy, am I disturbing you from your grazing? I'll move on, don't worry. But yeah, it is a shame, because uh, there's quite a few there. And uh, you can't really see them massively well through all the trees. But sometimes, just sometimes, along here, you do get quite a big opening. Right, anyway. Let's get back to the ranger. Well, that bird's a bit... Uh... He's noisy. Be some other animals on the right hand side but uh oh what have we got ahead looks like they're felling some trees up ahead or just cutting back the hedgerow not sure exactly which <coughs> Sure, we can get past so, at some point. It's all right. Thank you. Cheers. Well, what a glorious day to be out doing work. Let's carry on. And we'll see how far <clears throat> we can get. But if you live in South East Kent or you're down this way, then I'd highly recommend coming along this uh, cycle path along the back of Port Liam Zoo, which runs parallel to the Hive Canal. Because it just brings you out that far away from the town and uh, experience a bit of nature. think this is about where we uh, we might have to stop because uh, I've got a funny feeling this gate doesn't open 
and uh, well lifting this bike over that turnstile is going to prove somewhat difficult so what we're going to do this will be our uh, our halfway point and uh, we'll stop for some lunch and then we'll head back home Right, so um, I didn't actually stop for lunch. I've uh, decided that we're going to head back. Because um, there was literally nowhere to sit there. Um, and a slight game change, sorry, slight change of plan. Um, we'll go back a little bit of a different way because I don't really want to sort of disrupt those guys who are busy. Um, cutting back all the bushes etc so um, but what all we'll do is we'll just mirror that exactly um, on tomorrow's ride which is no big no big deal um, and also sort of shows a bit of other scenery around here as well so um, hopefully it might break up the uh, the greenness of it all But just a little bit further up here, there's a um, there's a little bridge that goes over the canal, and on the other side of that, I think I can stop and uh, we'll have our lunch, etc., etc. All right, let's go. turn right here just up here they've got their uh, tree cutting ahead this is a weak bridge hmm yeah this is the uh, a bridge that goes over the hive canal both ways and quite often you see a lot of people out here on their kayaks on their canoes going up and down the canal people fishing during fishing season that is but yeah it's lovely and uh, oh, that's a shame they've now put a gate Normally you used to be able to get along there. I can probably still get the bike around. But it will make it a little bit awkward. But let's see. Hmm. Maybe that might not be such a good idea. There is a lot of fawns up there. Uh, oh that's fine we can um, we'll just come and sit along here by the canal and we'll have our lunch listening to the sounds of the uh, tree cutting going ahead so called we'll just turn the power off for now drop our kickstand
All right, that should be good. And here, as I said, these are one of our fishing spots, obviously, which has been carved out. But that's a shame. Cans in the canal, floating on the top there. It's a real shame that people can't just take stuff home with them and put it in a bin. But there we go. But yeah, another glorious day out on the Ranger. Right, so uh, here we are. I'm just going to stop and uh, have a bite to eat. Get some crisps, pre-made sandwich from Sainsbury's and uh, a nice refreshing Ribena. Although it may have been nicer to have a nice cider on a day like today. Never mind. It is what it is. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, enjoy this grub and uh, then we'll set off on our journey home. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but there's hundreds of moddies around my bike and uh, yeah it's probably not the best place to uh, to stop around here <laughs> oh well right so uh, I'm all fed and watered feeling somewhat refreshed and ready to hit the road again but before we do that we'll, uh, we'll get rid of our uh, our waste, we'll pop it in our bag and we'll pop that in a bin on our way home or if I forget then I'll just pop it in my bin. Um, the one thing we don't do is actually leave stuff out here um, surrounding nature there's really no need for it. Um, yeah as I said we're going to take a different route back but we'll, um, we'll mirror the exact route um, with the lower tyre pressure as well um, because both guys are still working away <laughs> in fact I don't even know if you can hear me above all that but um, yeah it's sort of um, it's a necessity but it does sort of spoil the uh, the silence and the bliss of being out in the country anyhow that just leaves me to pack my tripod and my camera and then we'll set off on our journey back home see you in a bit well, my bike seems to have turned into a mozzie magnet, so uh, let's get out of here. switch her on wait to power up and let's go oh that actually feels so much nicer now we're moving it's uh as i said before it's a pretty warm day today attention so there we go past some horse 
poo poo. Um, can anybody tell me? I mean, obviously, you know, people who've got pets, they take their dogs out and uh, they're required by law to pick it up. So, uh, what's, can anyone tell me why, what's the difference with horses? Why don't horse owners have to pick it up? I'm not complaining massively. I'm sure it probably does, you know, the world of good to the crops. But, uh, just give the guy a thumbs up because he passed me quite nicely, considering how narrow these uh, little country lanes are. And I always appreciate when a driver does give you space. So well done to that DPD driver there. I'd give you employee of the month just for that. Unfortunately, I'm not your boss. Well, he's kicking up quite a bit of smoke there. Maybe it's time to uh, hold my breath a little bit as I go past. <laughs> slow down a little bit as well so uh, man that's two people two good deeds for the day aren't people nice sometimes oh sheepy sheeps Sheepy sheeps on my left. More sheepy sheeps. Hey sheepy sheepy. Sheepy sheepy sheeps. Oh, they're all on the trees. I'm not surprised in this heat. It's a, uh, wow, it's an amazing September. It's a shame the rest of the uh, summer didn't reflect but then hey us Brits we are known for our crap weather although I do feel sorry for those people in Scotland and Ireland because um, I believe it's even wetter and colder in those places I, uh, I had the pleasure a few years back of playing um, my music at, um, at a festival, uh, the Wax Magazine Festival in Elgin in Scotland, and that was some crazy weekend. Now, I think it was June or July we arrived, and uh, the place um, that we went to was a little place called Elgin in Scotland. And, uh, and we arrived and it was glorious sunshine. And um, we were driven, I think, from, uh, would it be Edinburgh Airport? I think we were picked up or it, I, I'm not sure which one, Glasgow, Edinburgh. Um, but we were driven to uh, Elgin, picked up. 
and uh, when we arrived at our destination after 10 minutes it started raining um, and then five minutes after that we looked up and there's hailstones hitting the window hitting everything outside and then those hailstones subsided and down came a little flutter of snow and then after about 20 minutes of snowing the sun came out again man that was bizarre that was really really bizarre and something i'll always remember so uh yeah i do feel sorry for my uh my scottish cousins because I mean, you're probably all hardened to it by now. Whereas I'm a guy from southeast of England who's uh, probably a little bit of a wuss, really, when it comes to the cold and the wet. So my thoughts are that we should be able to cut back and sort of pick up the route that we were going in originally. Road ahead closed, which one? I think it's the road that... So is it road ahead that one closed? Or road ahead closed, yeah. So if we head into this little village... I'm not actually so sure... Is this still West Hive? I don't really know. I'm not originally from around these parts, you see. So, uh, but I have lived here for many years, so um, you would think I'd know by now. Car coming up on my left, on my right, not on my left. Sheep, sheep, sheeps. Again, look, aren't people nice? Get out of the town, come into the country, and people are really nice. That guy hung back for ages there. I was sort of purposely going slow so that he had, you know, easier to pass me, but kind of makes me feel guilty now for going slow. Ah, oh, West Hive. Now we're into West Hive. So, what was that village back there then? Can anybody tell me? Although their roads are a bit like... Remember doing that when you were like five? I haven't stopped. Yeah, I think there's a way back to the canal from here. So we'll, uh, but as I said, <clears throat> we'll mirror this, uh, this route. Ah, uh, yes, here we are. This is the canal. So I can turn right up here and get back on the 
the trail that we were originally on. So we turn right here, and here we are. Right, let's power on through here and I'll see you guys in a minute. So we got the family bikes out for the day, so it's Inks or friends. So I'll have to make my presence known in order to get past. Normally I'd shout obscenities at people, but you know, this will probably be a family video. It's only on low power as well. On to uh, on to tarmac once again. Back once again. For the renegade master, people bad of it. Power to the people. Oh, nearly lost my balance then. Although it is a bit up and down here along here. There goes my excuse for losing my balance. It was the cadence in the road officer. The unevenness, sir, of the bad, bad British roads. In fact, this is quite a good one. Are bad roads a thing in, in, in America, in the United States? I wonder. Or is it just another British tradition that we've got crap weather, we've got crap roads, we've got a pretty shit fucking, a pretty, oh, excuse my French, um, we've got pretty shit public transport. Oh, I'm gonna reach to the button. Bing. There we go. Do I want to hire one of those bikes today? No, I don't. Why? I've got a side rush of range of me. Why would I want to do that? That's the thing, isn't it? Why would you want to do that? It's all a bit weird. There we go. I'm across. Oh, that breeze is lush.
Alright, look. <clears throat> Oh, he seems like he's enjoying the weather as well, which is so nice to see with all these like mobility vehicles these days. You know, like as I'm getting older myself. This, well, I don't know if uh, it was my battery that's died on my GoPro because it's attached to my chest, or why it just cut out just then. But uh, it seems to be going for now. Maybe I've just talked too much. That'll be a first. Okay, so um, yeah, my GoPro battery ran out, so um, I wasn't able to film. And what did I do? I was a bit naughty, wasn't I? Yeah, I whacked it up to five. So um, what we'll have to do, <laughs> we'll mimic that in tomorrow's video as well. So to give it a true reading. But um, anyway, let's take a look at the screen at the moment. So it's saying we've got 36, 37% battery. Um, and 140.6 miles. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do this again. Um, I'll put up all the other details, um, I'll, I'll check all the video bits out um, when we get back, but um, yeah, don't forget, I think this is going to be a two-part video to be honest with you, because uh, I've waffled on way too much. Um, anyway, come back and watch part two. Bye for now. <laughs>